Now I'm going to switch over to the other part of my lecture, which is going to be talking about water enhancement technologies. You know, Leonardo da Vinci said the water is the driving force of all for all nature. And it is, you know, water at a source, as we know, is natural. It has a has energy, it's flowing, it has information, and it's abundance, right? This life force is energy. We all know that, especially if you've seen water at its source. If you've ever been to Costa Rica or you went to the Amazon or any other place that has like, you know, waterfalls, or you went to the top of the mountains and you hear the the the, the little streams and the rivers that are flowing, there's this life force that you can see. Life is always higher around the energy of the water, but it's that water that's coming directly from nature. You know, life force, you know, is energy, and that's the sense the essential for the whole holist, holistic well-being, meaning our body, as you know, is 70% water, but our cells, we have 100% cells, right, from our microbiome to our cells and our immune system, they all use the water. So even though, yes, we're 70% water, all our cells use water. And so the key is making sure that water is as optimum for our whole being and our total health. And so we now know through science that this is quite new for many people who might be listening to this lecture, but water actually carries memory. It has information. And for those people who don't understand what I'm talking about, you can easily like Google Dr. Emoto uh, and look at you know, all the documentaries and all the studies that have been published uh, before. And now that's gone even further into other fields of science, but water has an impression. Water can be imprint imprinted with information. Now, a lot of people are like, what is it? It's clear. It's a, it's a liquid. What do you mean by that? So go back and do the research because you'll see how impressive that we understand that water does have memory and it carries either good things and it's from its environment or it carries bad things. And unfortunately, right now, water has an abused journey, right? The especially the ocean right now, especially most of the, the natural uh, parts of water has this terrible abuse journey because it's tons of toxins, it's tons of waste. And the, it continues even when it comes through the municipal, how it even gets this through various pipes, through various environmental aspects, to even to get your home to your sink is also this continued abusive journey. But it's actually imprinting information into the water. Now, this long abused journey then is depleted of what we call the life force of energy, right? So a lot of us can like drink water and still feel not hydrated, right? So a lot of us like maybe a lot of people might say, hey, you know what, Dr. Pai, I'm moving towards a plant-based diet or I'm already plant-based or I'm an athlete or uh, you know, I, 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 I'm a performer or I, I work every day and I carry my bottle of water and I drink it, you know, I drink it, but I just don't feel hydrated. I still feel tired. I still feel dehydrated, even though I'm drinking the amount of ounces that they recommend me to do. And we have to understand that there's a life force that has been removed from the, the water itself. Now, the first problem with water in the United States and worldwide, that it's contaminated. Hundreds of chemicals, fertilizers, pesticides, prescription drugs, forever chemicals, you know, PUFAs and PUFOs. Right now, you can go to Environmental Working Group, like I mentioned it yesterday, but you go to Environmental Working Group EWG, and then you type in water database on the search engine, and you put in your zip code, and you will see that they've independently tested the municipalities in your city. And you will see also how many contaminants there is. And you'll be surprised because most people think, well, gosh, you know, isn't, the, isn't my munis municipality filtering the water? Yeah, they're filtering the water. It doesn't have bacteria. It doesn't have E. coli. You're not going to get, you know, dysentery or, or you know, you know, some salmonella from the water. But they're not taking out all the chemicals. So all the things that we put in fertilizers and the people are spraying in their lawns that rains goes back down into the drain and all the prescription medications that we take and they throw down the in, in the toilet or we actually excrete and urinate it out. You know, my book actually has a chapter and, and in one of the chapters it talks about it will list the studies of you know which cities in the United States have the highest amount of which prescription drugs based on the population, right? So Seattle, for example, has the highest amount of antidepressants, you know? That's why they created grunge and coffee, you know, saying so, because it's cloudy. People had more depression in places that the sun is not always shining. You know, Las Vegas, as I mentioned before, highest amount of hormones in the water. Okay, that's a no brainer. Um, New York has the highest amount of Xanax, which is an anti anxiety medication, right? So the, the more people take this, the more actually they excrete out, the more it actually comes back in the water. And unfortunately, everywhere in America, forever chemicals, right? And we notice, notice that, that that is coming out everywhere, uh, becoming a more and more of a problem. So we do need to do something called water purification, which is municipal, right? You, 
the water's going to come in and they got to purify and then it's going to eventually go to your home. But then still doesn't have, they're still not removing all the chemicals that you need. Right. So when you go there, you go see like, like, so like ours here in Albuquerque, it's filtered and everything like that comes from municipal. We have 585 times more arsenic in our water. El Paso has 2,500 more times more arsenic in the water. We have uranium and uh, 3.8 times more uranium. And unless you're working in a nuclear lab or Homer Simpson, I tell my patients, you shouldn't be exposed to uranium. Right. But every place in America has now exposures. And we have to look at then what is coming in as part of an inflammatory, as part of a, uh, you know, a, a cancer promoter, as a, a part of some of this immunosuppressive neurodegenerative, we have to look at what are the other things that we're doing aside of shifting to a plant-based diet, aside of you know, testing food allergies, aside of looking at nutritional levels, what you do, aside of looking at your microbiome, we have to look at the things that are kind of like on our plate every day or under our nose, which is the beverages that we're drinking all the time. And sometimes, you know, even when people do what we call purification now, which is important, right? Reverse osmosis or gravity filters, which most people now, if they can afford it, it's important because you really want to, you know, get rid of everything. You just don't want to say like, oh, I'm having a carbon filter. And when you look at this environmental working group, you'll see that on the bottom of the pages, it will show you what a carbon filter will do. Those are the filters that most people have in the refrigerator or the little pipe in the back of the refrigerator. Or, for example, not naming any brands, but like, for example, a Brita-like thing or a Pure-like thing. Those are carbon filters. And you'll see that carbon filter will remove certain things, but it won't remove certain things. So you have to, each person, each patient that we work with, we actually analyze and look at, well, what's in your water and what's in your city? Because sometimes you might have something that works perfectly well and it removes all your toxins. Fantastic. And sometimes people, which is most they will have some kind of carbon filtration. And guess what? They're still, it's still not removing things. And then when we test them, they have high toxins of those things that are not being pulled through their filter. So when someone comes back high with, say, uranium or arsenic or, or tungsten or platinum or anything like that, we have to say, well, is our filter removing it? And if it's not, then it's really important because these are things that we're drinking, you know, half your weight in ounces per se a day on the general recommendations up to a certain weight. And those things over time could potentially cause problems. And even on the environmental working group site, it will tell you about each chemical, what the potential danger, potential cancer, potential you know, chronic problem that that can be causing for us. But once we do this, once we clean the water, which we must, it's the first important thing for everybody is drink clean water, right? But then where's the life force energy? So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. We need to filter it. We definitely need to do reverse osmosis or gravity filter of some kind. We need that water to be devoid of chemicals, right? But the problem is the prana, the, or some people would call it the chi, the life force is no longer there. So what I want to talk about in the remaining part of the lecture is what we call jiva water devices or wellness technologies. It's actually something, using something called quantum electrodynamics. OK, uh, you can go to jivawater.com backslash rock doc to start learning more about this technology. But what they are, it's really simple. It's scientifically proven water structuring devices that does three things. Importantly, number one, it removes trauma from the water. It's bad memory. It's kind of the, the misinformation that's been presented to the water. It actually increases the energetic levels of the water and it returns the water to its most natural nourishing state. And there's different devices sizes based on the amount of flow and use that is needed. Now, the nice thing is that there's no batteries. It's not a filtering device. So this is not going to filter out the chemicals. It's not going to filter out the heavy metals. It's not going to filter out the pesticides. Those are things that, again, reverse osmosis or gravity filters are doing. This is after you've done that. We're now in the next stage called nutrification. That's the next step after purification. You have to purify your water. People need clean drinking water, number one. So don't get me wrong. But after you purify our water, then we were, we're doing something called naturefication. We're trying to now improve and enhance, which we now can do using the Jiva water devices. So there's a three-stage process. It's proprietary. And I won't go into too much detail, but it will take the water. It will transform it. It will erase the trauma from it. It will then enhance the energetic force of the water, and then it will make the water structured, which is more energetic, okay? Now, for those who don't understand what I'm talking about, again, go to jivawater.com backslash rock doc, and there's a video there on nutrification, so you actually can see what I'm talking about and these three stages of how that occurs with the device. No filter, 
no battery, no replacement. So you set it and you forget it. That's what I like about this kind of technology because it's something that it's not that I have to keep changing or I have to replace or somebody's got to keep you know, giving me something. It's like, no, you put it in, it's going to do what it does and you're done. Now, as those size devices, we have four of them. And these are actually names of uh, important rivers in India. So this is just where, where, where the technology. In my book, I do mention briefly, you know, structured water. And some of the scientists that I've been working with, Dr. Krishna Manapa, for the last uh, 10, 15 years that I've known him, uh, in the last six years, they've been taking these technologies. Then they went to further to do studies. They've patented the process of how they actually manufacture and produce these things. And now they've done hundreds of studies now in India, which is this is why we now use it over there. And now we're coming and bringing it here to the United States. We have a handheld called Yami, and that's what I use. So after I filter, we have a reverse osmosis in our home. Uh, we also have a gravity filter in our office. Um, and so once it comes out of the, the either or that's already purified, then we just run it through the handheld Yami, and then it also does all the nutrification and, and structuring to the water. This actually is a photo of uh, the, the Vipassa that I have in my house. It's a little bit of a large device, and it's a two-inch opening. And this is what most people will put in their home or their office building. Um, so the water after, you know, again, we have a home house filter to take out all the iron. We have high iron where I live and, you know, and, and take out the chlorine and some of these other, uh, other chemicals and prescription drugs after, before it goes into the rest of my house and to, before it goes into the rest of my shower or my laundry and all the stuff like that, we actually have it go through this device. And more importantly, where the cool aspect is for those people who are like, you know what, uh, you know, I'm good. I have a filtration in my, in my house, but I love plant-based foods. I love agriculture. I grow my garden. I grow my vegetables and all. We'll show you in a minute. This is where the, the action is because in India, why we're doing so much studies in India, because right now, as you all know, with climate change that's happening, there is a worldwide problem with water and drought. We can't use more chemicals. We don't want to be using more chemicals, and but we need higher increasing of yield of what we do grow with the limited amount of water. And in India, since we have so many farms and these things that are major problems, it's easier for us to implement studies showing one side of a farm using a, a water going through a Jiva device and one side of the other farm same, same farmer too, by the way, uh, showing uh, no Jiva water device and seeing the differences. Now for people and their pets, you know, boosting hydration, boosting immunity, uh, enhances blood oxygen levels, which we're now we're actually able to show, um, uh, helps with detoxification, right? And actually, you know, you get that hydrated feeling, which is interesting. Like you drink it, you feel, you feel hydrated. It's, it's a weird concept, but a lot of people like they're drinking stagnant water. And after a period of time, people feel like, you know, I'm less fatigued. I'm less tired. It's not drinking more water. It's just drinking the water that now has been enhanced. Okay. So these are the options for you that will benefit you and also the pets. So, you know, even our dog, Princess Winnie, as most of you know, or have seen on our website or have come visit us in our, in our, in our clinic is, you know, who lives with us now for 12 years, comes to work every day, loyally, faithfully seeing our patients. She gets Jiva water as well. So it's, it's very interesting because you can just run everything through the, the device. Again, no filter, no batteries, no replacement. It's stainless steel. Fantastic. Now the benefits for farming. So, so again, if people are like, well, you know what? I want to see something. I feel something, obviously, but I want to see something. Why grow my vegetables? We're talking about plant-based nutrition. You know, you just had a couple of doctors talking about raw foods and growing foods and having sprouts and stuff. So now the cool thing is because that's the thing that people will see, right? People want to see something, you know, just like when we do PMA, it sometimes may take some time to get cellular activation to occur so that people notice that, oh my God, I am having less inflammation. I have more, uh, more energy. I sleep better. I have, you know, my, my neuropathy takes a little while to improve, but it does improve. But when you see things like from farming, it's very cut and dry. You can easily see this side, this plant, not this plant, and it's easy to see. But what we see is that improves plant immunity. So we can see now with plants that are treated with Jiva water, they have less disease. And in India, we have a lot of problems. Again, that's why they use a lot of chemicals because of disease, right? There's a lot of these kind of plant diseases that go around in nature. And also with the drought, we can see better moisture retention in the soil that actually the Jiva water is used. The water, actually the soil retention is higher. It actually stays moist for a longer period of time, stimulates root development. There's less chemicals that we need. It revives the natural soil biome. And what we want to do in the future, which is something that is going to be one of my personal studies, is that since we do microbiome studies in patients, 
we want to start seeing in patients that are using Jiva water, how that also affects our own microbiome in addition to just the soil microbiome that we can test. Now, faster growth cycles we see, more importantly, increasing yield. And what my favorite thing is, aside of increasing yield, which is a production aspect, is also higher nutrific or nutri nutrition values. Now, we know life force, right? We all understand it. We, we taste foods. That's what we're trying to tell people to eat more whole plant foods, right? Whole food, plant-based diet, for example. And we do know that eating sprouts and eating greens and eating live foods has a higher energetic value. We can actually study these things. We can actually measure the photons, the energetic, you know, uh, you know, kind of um, expansiveness that's occurring from different technologies. And you know, here's an animal protein here and here's plant foods, right? So that's why, you know, people feel better. That's why it's an anti-inflammatory diet. That's why fresh live foods. And we now know that when we process it, a little bit damaging, we still need to heat foods. We're not talking about just eating raw. We're talking about we did invent fire for a reason, but getting the whole foods in general, you still have this higher life force energy. But when we overcook things like microwaving it or high industrial processing, ultra processed foods, it's even worse. There's no life force or energy. So simply, they've done studies, and I've only picked a few here. And when you go to uh, sangevini.net and sign up, we will do multiple webinars in the future with the scientists, with the farmers, and we'll talk to them as well. And we'll talk to everybody involved in these projects because we really want to show that these are things that we can help with improving not only our food, our food production, but our overall environmental sustainability. When we looked at here with hydroponic spinach, okay, Producing the same, you know, as you can see, they're all hydroponic. So some, some sunsets, again, same amount of roots, same amount of seeds. They water it the same. So it's all calculated, by the way. It's all kind of systematized uh, me mechanically. You know, the, the spinach, you know, gave a certain amount of weight, you know, per, per crop of, of, of growth. And then when they changed it just to using the Jiva water on the other side, we see that there's a higher yield, 42% increase in weight, right? So we can actually grow more. From the, from the same amount of water that we did before, which is important for us, right? Going forward with climate change issues. Now, even my favorite, which I talked about yesterday, right? We talked about bosmeric. We talked about, you know, the, the differences between turmeric and curcumin, right? Curcumin being a portion of the turmeric. But when they do this for crops, now I, I don't have a good picture in, on the webinar. I'll be showing you actually the length of it, but the size of the turmeric rhizome is not only bigger, than the, the regular ones, but more importantly, the nutritional value. And actually, and this has all been scientifically and independently tested, that it actually has with the Jiva water enhanced the nutrition inside, higher percent of curcuminoids, right? That's what we're talking about when we're talking about bosomeric, like how to remember it's like curcumin is about uh, three to 5% of turmeric, right? So, and we have to extract those out to make the three curcuminoids in bosomeric, right? The C3, for example, complex. And the idea is that now we can incorporate these in farming and actually have a higher yield so that we can actually get better, higher potency products. But here, for most people, just eating the turmeric now has a stronger anti-inflammatory health benefit, right? We're trying to enhance the nutrition value because soil has been depleted and the water has been damaged. And so we're now we're looking back, can we make food medicine? And now we're trying to make it even more effective. These are just a few photos, but you can see here, again, these are these are beef, you know, with normal water. And this is with the Jiva water with certain plants and the flower production is better. And even the rice paddy fields, you know, we use so much rice in India and Asia, you know, as a daily staple, sometimes three times a day in the person's diet. And so it's important because when we're having this drought problem and water problem, we can actually improve yield feed, feeding millions of people. The soil, as I mentioned before, the soil retention is more moist. It stays moist longer. And then even like another crop here, chili, which is one of our favorites. If you listen to my healing spices, Again, on YouTube, that's another thing that I've been doing. You know, we talked about chili and caps capsaicin and the capsaicinoids, that the chili pods and the chili uh, plant itself is actually higher, but the amount of capsaicin content, just like the curcumin content in the uh, turmeric rhizome um, was increased. We can see even the life force of the like sugar cane got better. And even the tomatoes got better. We have hundreds of different vegetables and fruits and, and other fruits and vegetables that we don't even have here in America. I just picked the ones that some people would kind of recognize. But this is what we want to start using now, in addition to all the things, is talking about how to increase our health and wellness using advanced wellness technologies. For those information want to go further at all, go to centripics.us backslash rockdoc or 
on the water enhancement devices, you can go to jivawater.com backslash rockdoc itself for both information on videos and all. And for those people who actually uh, purchase or even get any of these products, we're able to help with further guidance on use and other tips that people might be able to use. If you're a patient or a client of ours, uh, we can give some other types of advice on synergies, on enhancements of those things, and other things that we've been seeing in our practice now for many years on how we can incorporate these things and further get uh, um, mutual benefits on a variety of levels. I do want to end with a um, quote from Paramahansa Yogananda is that when modern science will discover how to go deep into the subtle electromagnetic constitution of man, it will be able to correct most of the medical conditions in the ways that would seem almost miraculous today. So this is what we've been talking about. Like what did Einstein and Tesla talk about? Frequencies and vibration and energy. This is important. We get this from food. We get this from being on the planet Earth. We get this from being in the garden. And now we're looking at how we can use technologies now that we live in a modern world and a modern society. How do we get those things now that we can kind of create that from a, from a, a device or a wellness technology to help enhance our healing. You can contact me here at sanjevity.net. We do consultations to people worldwide via telemedicine and, and, and health coaching worldwide. We also have a store. You can get Boss American, look at all our wonderful products. And then for, again, the wellness technology, centropics.us backslash rockdoc and jivawater.com backslash rockdoc. Thank you very much for taking your time this morning and listening to this presentation on wellness technologies. I look forward to speaking to many of you uh, on the Q&A. Thank you very much for that informative presentation, doctor. Um, so we're now gonna begin the live Q and A. Uh, I'll be asking some questions as well as opening up to the audience. But before we begin, we'd like to make sure that everyone knows how to connect with you. You showed some of the stuff. Uh, where would they also find your books? So my book is uh, on uh, San, uh, Sanjevni store. Dot com. You can actually order it there and get a signed copy. I'm, I'm happy to sign the books and send it out to you. Also, um, you can get it on Amazon if you like to purchase things on Amazon. I prefer people to buy it from me, then I can sign it. And then, you know, we're bypassing Mr. Bezos. But either way, also it's on Audible. So those people who like to listen to uh, Audible books, it's professionally read. It's about 14 hours. So it's a, it's a big book. So it's about 450 pages with 1,000 references, evidence-based information on the 10 definitive steps, how to prevent, reverse, and treat disease through diet, lifestyle, and the use of natural anti-inflammatories. And so, yeah, you can get it at our, our store, sanjevinistore.com, uh, Amazon, or Audible. Thanks for sharing that. We'll now begin our Q&A session. We'll be asking questions of you, doctor. Um, our, we're also going to open it up to our audience. Uh, we first just want to explain to everyone how this works. We don't take questions directly from the chat. Instead, we ask everyone to virtually raise their hand if you're not sure how to do this. What you need to do is click on the reactions button, second from the right at the bottom of your Zoom window, then click on the raise hand function in the menu that pops up. We will take questions in the order in which they were received. When it's your turn, I will unmute you, prompt you to state your name, where you're from, and ask your question. We ask that everyone keep their questions brief and on topic. We will then mute you. In order to give everyone a chance to get their question answered, we won't take follow-up questions. However, if there is time, you can just raise your hand again, and if we can get to you, then we can we can do it that way. So um, let's see here. We have a question here from Ben. Ben, please state your name, where you're from, and state your question. Um, my my first name, my being well, I'm from the Maryland in America here. So um, my question is, um, I know water is so important. The human body is made by water. Seventy percent is water. But uh, how do you uh, how do you um, do you have any evidence that your water is works for the patient to decrease the infl inflammation? Uh, do you have data? 
Um, you know, so so on, on on a clinical trial or a study, absolutely not right now at this time. But we do have uh, uh, hundreds and uh, hundreds of testimonials from patients and customers who have used the device. It is one thing, you know, we want to look at is that you know you can always try something and see it for yourself. You know, like be a scientist. I'm a scientist myself, so I use all the things. Anything that I mentioned in my book, anything that I mentioned as a lifestyle recommendation to my my clients, I use myself. Now, some things like water enhancement. Uh, some people are like, well, how does that work, right? So same thing with the PMA, like some people are like, well, you know, where's the studies? Now, some things we have more studies on. And so that's why it's easier to do, say, uh, agriculture studies or, or studies on, on or getting a testimonial. But we are moving into the level of, you know, what I want to look at is even microbiome, as I mentioned before, microbiome changes, because, you know, the water is everything. And we now know that, you know, dead water, you know, most people like if you ever been to Costa Rica, I was recently in Costa Rica a couple of years ago. And the ionization of the water just coming in a rainforest, that high density of life force. That's why, like, there was more nutrient, uh, animal density, more plant density in the places where the actually lo- the water is hot, actually the highest. So we're trying to look at technologies that can actually mimic that and produce that because we don't live in a natural environment. You live in Maryland. I live in Albuquerque, right? It is what it is. But it is something that I would I would, I would implore you to say, well, why don't you try it yourself? See what you feel, see what you notice, and then see what you notice on your family, your friends, or your customers, or clients, or your patients. Okay. Thank you for that answer, doctor. Um, are you are you working toward getting those uh, those clinical trials done? For- I'm working on trying to get more studies on human patients because, you know, what happens right now in, in India, they're looking at first from an agricultural standpoint because that's the fast and furthest thing that we can do in terms of helping mass people, right? If we can produce more food with less chemicals, that's the goal right now. Can we get more people eating more plant-based, right? Even I didn't t- talk to this about in my lecture because there's lots of data on animals, okay? Now, I'm a plant-based person, so I didn't want to show the, the, the animal stuff, but when they use it for farming, for example, there is improvement in the health of the cows, the chicken, and the pigs. It, it improves like even less dig- uh, diseases that those animals have been shown to have, less antibiotics, less. So that everybody's trying to move towards you know even cleaner uh, cleaning animal industries, right? In India, we they use a lot of dairy, for example. They use a lot of the manure also for farming as well. So can we improve that? So they have lots of data on that in terms of the wellness of the animal itself has improved, right? Uh, even the smell, for example, of the farm goes down. So there's a lot of things in terms of like what we're going to do a project here, hopefully in our state soon, what might be a project with the zoo. And if we can get that done, then we can actually show on a larger scale. Like these are animals that we all are putting in enclosed containers uh, and, and facilities. We need to make it like they are nature. Otherwise, that's why they have higher rates of diseases. And now we know, at least in India, in the farms, that that's what they're using it for. So it's decreasing the amount of disease, improving the animal's health. Now, can I do that on human patients? It's not as easy, right? It's easy to do it on a farm because you have thousands of animals. You can put something here. We'd have to do it individually in some people's homes, but we would want to move towards where we have, you know, data on like, here's 20 people before and after, or here's 20 people that don't have the device with the same similar, you know, matching conditions, but there's a time and an effort for that. Right now it's easier to do it in the animal world than the agricultural world. And if someone's using this water device, how quickly would they expect to see results? And what would be the initial results that they would say? So, you know, for most people, again, it's, it's like anything else. It takes a little bit of time. I, I give it a, I give it at least a week to start people start noticing other benefits, you know, because your body doesn't just change overnight, right? So even if you eat plant-based, whole food plant-based, take Boschmeric, you know, it's still a change, right? There's a cellular activation of change. And even your hemoglobin A1C is a three-month life cycle of a red blood cell. Right. So I always tell people, you know, give it three months because that's when everything starts to change because we're changing, you know, your cells are always dividing. Everybody wants on and off shows. The problem with America right now is instant gratification. Everybody wants, nobody wants to put an effort, right? They just want to turn it on. And that's where the PMEA device, right? The cloud, it's kind of helpful because you're kind of turning on for 15 minutes. It's lasting for 12 hours. You're getting that benefit. But when it comes to diet and other things, even just regular hydration, it still takes some time, right? The people to get there, but you'll notice those other benefits. What I always tell people is like, just do before and after. Here's your blood pressures before. Here's your other studies before, you know, use the device and then measure it off. We've only heard positive things. I've only seen positive things, only experienced positive things. But as a scientist, I, I have to say, well, I don't have a double blinded randomized control trial on this. We're like on the Boston America or other things like I talked about yesterday as in nutraceuticals. We have that, right? But it takes time. Like it's taken 20 years to get to double blinded randomized control trials 
on nutraceuticals. And now we're talking about a brand new field of science, but it will happen. You know, even with the cloud PMEA, just letting you know that there's a largest study being done now on thousands of patients. So every time somebody acquires these, they actually can be enrolled into a study and they're actually now defining it and, and monitoring and measuring outcomes. So it's not just like, here's a, here's a technology or device. We're like, participate so that we can absolutely gather. I, I think it's at the Sigmund Freud Institute in Europe where they're actually going to, so like they have thousands of people. So probably in the next three years, we're going to have, you know, tens of thousands of patients. And now we can say like, what are their symptoms that they're, they're responding to and what is it responding to best? And, uh, uh, and what are the, what, what are the things that are working and not working? Uh, that's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, our next Audience member is David, and David, please state your name, where you're from, and ask your question. Yes, my name is David. I'm from the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pai. I was curious, before you um, went with Cocoon, did you ever consider other technologies like the Wave, Raid, wave Rider or Wave Guard? And, and secondly, any thoughts about hydrogen water? Uh, so I'm not familiar with those two devices, so I can't comment on that. But I will, uh, I will. You know, if you put it in the chat, I'll write it down. I'll look at it, okay? Because I'm always looking at everything, by the way. So I'm not just like, oh, uh, one thing. And we use multiple things in our practices, and even things on heart rate variability. I didn't bring up today. There's other technologies that we actually do, like practicing and measuring biofeedback um, on hydrogen water. I'm not, you know, I, I'm the guy that is trying to be keeping the, the water more into this natural state. I actually tried hydrogen water for a while. I got one of those devices. Is, you know, this is like a couple of years ago prior to the pandemic, just because one of the things to test is it wasn't expensive and you can hydrogen water. I really didn't notice much of a difference. But one of the things that we want to go back to just from a scientific perspective is that that we are not adding anything to the water except for enhancing its structure and its energetic quality, right? What we don't want to do is actually change water from its natural state because that's how not what nature is intended to. So a lot of times you'll see also like people not only adding hydrogen, they're also trying to look at, at increasing pH, for example. And we don't recommend P high pH water for anybody. Uh, the high pH water actually will affect the microbiome. So even though some people will have like heartburn or reflux inflammation in their stomach, so they're making it more alkaline to make them feel a little bit better just here, then they think it's a systemic thing. Or for example, since we know we're supposed to be eating an alkaline diet, plant-based, for example, right? It, rather than animal protein, which is pro-inflammatory and acidic diet, then they say, well, if I drink alkaline water, maybe it makes my whole body alkaline. That's not true. It actually will uh, affect the microbiome negatively. And we have tons of patients where we can demonstrate this because a lot of people will buy for example, alkaline water at the store. You go to the store, there's hundreds of companies that are doing that super high pH water. And, um, you know, we can have a before they, they bought the device, a microbiome test. And then later on, like six months later, a year, oh, I went and bought someone, someone sold me something, or I saw something at a demonstration or a, a conference or something, and they've tried it and it's negatively affected that because that, they're changing the pH of your stomach, your pH is stomach of one to two. You want to keep it at one to two. That's, that's how the microbiome is set to fix at keeping overall uh, dysbiosis and, and overgrowths um, uh, imbalanced. And we see that people who use high pH water will actually do that. Hydrogen water, I don't have as much data on per se, but I'm, I'm someone that I, I didn't know personally any, any true benefits. And I tried it for several, several months because it's like, it was no, it's easy to do. Um, but I haven't really seen that kind of data. And also from nature, it's not really coming on that higher level of adding that extra. So I, I was kind of like, I was trying to preserve things, but enhance it to be where it's in its most natural state. Okay. So if you're not a big fan of uh, alkaline water or hydrogenated water, um, what now? Well, it's not that I'm a big fan. The data will also show that we shouldn't be doing it. That's just a marketing oh, okay. that everybody, I'd want to be like, oh yeah, I'm not a fan of it. It's like, if you understand the physiology data. or immunology or how your microbiome works, then it's like, no, we, we, we weren't designed to be drinking pH of eight, nine, 10 water, uh, even though there's devices and machines and, and filters that will do that. Filtering the water is the most important thing. So definitely, you know, I always tell people you have to, like, like I said, look at EWG, look at the water database, get, make sure you get a filter that, you know, and not, not everybody needs a, this a reverse osmosis or gravity. Like sometimes the carbon filter will do fine, but you have to make sure that you are clearing it out. But once you clear it out and you really want to go further, you're never going to be disappointed.